What's up, what's up? This is Blueprint. You're watching Shots Fire. Yeah. I love them all. Fans and naysayers, max and fake players, lovers and player haters, brothers that trade gators. But cats copycat cause they want the same flavor. But I was taught that big offenses make better neighbors. I told Fest to hold tight and get greater later. He didn't have the patience, so we tried to take my paper. When brothers gon' learn. How did you hook up with like all the Def Jux guys and everything like that? Uh, well, you, it's funny because we we hooked up with them because we were friends before Def Jux started. Okay. Like I looked at it like, and even now, and a lot of people don't know, like the the first release party we had, which was the Greenhouse Effect, the Logic release party. Mm -hmm. Our lineup for that show was Greenhouse Effect, the Logic, all the Megahertz. Uh, Adam's family came down with Cannibal what? Ox and Aesop Rock. What? Uh, this was in 1999. 99. We're at in Columbus. In, in Columbus. That's called Thieves World. And that's, you know, and so we were friends with them during that time because we had met online. This is when like message boards were popping, and uh -huh. you know, ATAC was selling tapes, and you know, uh, Sandbox Automatic, and so these these through these like message boards. Was one yeah, hip hop site. Yeah. So we started meeting guys. I met all the guys from like uh, from Adam's family, and they came out, and then they would come out every year to scribble. And Shout out to house. Tim Alaska. Yeah, yeah, that's my yeah. guy right there. Yeah. yeah, so like when Def Jux didn't even exist, you know, so like and Rhyme Series had still had never put out. A record that wasn't from Minneapolis. Uh -huh. So, like, Soul Position ended up being the first non Minneapolis group on Rhyme Series. Was that like 2003? 2003. But we, from 2001, we had, had, they had had our deals. No, really, 2002, the first EP came uh -huh. out. So, 2001, we were signed. Uh, that's crazy. So, how did, how did you break into, I guess, the whole like Minneapolis thing? Was it like a fucking, like, was it a boys club? Or well, like? It was more like a friends thing because it was like they were touring. Cause they were the first guys touring. Like Atmosphere used to tour, and it was just Slug, Idea, and Abilities. Mm -hmm. um, when Idea and Abilities were like 15, they were touring with Slug. Yeah. And they would come through Ohio, and there was a period where they came to Cincinnati, and uh, somebody put Mr. Dibbs put us on the show to open for them. Yeah, shout out to Dibbs. Yeah, because he was he knew them before anybody, and so we played there with them in front of whatever 30, 40 people, and then they were in Columbus, and since we had connections in both cities. They asked us to open in Columbus. This was like a month later, we opened in Columbus, and that's when we all met and we became friends. Mm -hmm. Three weeks later, they were like, hey, we just got a Cleveland date. You guys want to come play with us in Cleveland? Make it happen. Boom, we went and played in Cleveland mm -hmm. with them. And then a few months later, they're like, hey, well, you know, we got this guy who's putting out a tape in Minneapolis. Uh, would you guys, we saw you guys got a show in uh, Chicago with uh, Adam's family. You guys want to come play? this release party we're like yeah who is it they're like oh it's brother ali he's got this tape called rice of passage mm -hmm. he's new you know we're like all right cool we'll do it we had man at that so we drove from chicago to me and that's how we met brother what's ali. that true that's like four hours from uh, six hours from chicago to minneapolis okay yeah so that's kind of how we started meeting all those guys and you know mm -hmm. we just all became friends back then and we used to have this thing where we used to just trade tapes mm -hmm. so like when i would see you know, Slug and Slug would see like Illogic or we'd see Aesop. We would all just trade the Maxell tapes. Mm -hmm. And you would get a tape and it would have like three, you know, Canox songs and five Adams Family songs and four well, like Soul Position tapes? songs. Yeah, it was like that, but everyone would add to them. And so we all had tapes and we would make our own and exchange them. So, like, we, this between like the, you know, the Earl the Rhyme Series guys and the, and the before Jeff, Jeff Just guys, like yeah. Aesop, Illogic, us, uh, Cannibal Ox, Adams Family, we all just had this exchange we would do you know we would go to rock steady and sleep on their couches and stuff mm -hmm. and they would come to ohio and like this was before def jux so when def jux started i look at it more like def jux was it didn't necessarily it looked at like it created that movement mm -hmm. but i looked at it like like l saw the movement mm -hmm. he saw us he saw everything we were doing he saw how it was bubbling up same thing with rhyme says and that's why mm -hmm. and those labels kind of represented the movement that we kind of already were were there they're looking at these guys like yo Someone needs to sign all these dudes because they're starting to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good business is not creating shit. Yeah, you know <laughs> exactly. It's like a, like McDonald's didn't fucking invent the hamburger. Yeah, you know it's like oh no, people really like hamburgers. <laughs> let's fucking let's fucking put a fucking logo on these burgers. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. How should I begin? Back on my grind again. Writers wanna bite the kid. Writers wanna slight the kid. Herb's got nerve to criticize the life I live. But if they can't relate, then I don't write for them. But if you're listening now, home or out in the crowd, I gotta assume you feel in the style. Otherwise, you probably would've turned me off like that. Straight now, okay, back to the track.